There are five districts. Old Town, a personal favorite of Lil Nas X. District Null, which is a Christmas themed area having no legal force. Oh, now the name makes sense. Pedra's World, a hallucinogenic sequence of wackiness similar to Elmo's world, the sewer, a geek infested underground, yet sadly no turtles in sight, and the internet. Which I guess is a metaphor for a global computer network providing a variety of information and communication facilities consisting of interconnected networks using standardized communication protocols. <laughs> Obviously. In the beginning was Old Town Road, a district of butchers who use more than just knives to do their bidding. While you do start with a basic dual wheel setup, in later levels you obtain the ability to equip dual wheel Uzis. Learning the mechanics of how to best incorporate your kicking abilities introduces that you can use your environment to your advantage. As well in the environment, zip lines are used to travel to slash over your opponents as a means of transportation and silence your enemies after they scream obscenities. Last of all, the concept of tripwires are used, and should be avoided otherwise the activation of turrets will ensue chaos on your mortal body. Usually to conclude a chapter in this game, the last level of each area will have something special that isn't prevalent in any of the other chapters as to not only break up the normal flow of a level, but to make a good transition between districts. The first installment is the conclusive motorcycle chase, where you can still use your skills in weaponry and time control and face off against multiple cars. These cars contain butchers with guns, which besides sounding like the most emo band to ever exist, turns the gameplay from a strategic shooter to an intense fight for your life as you're zooming by at 100 miles per hour. Once all of the cars have become burning piles of metal, District Null is the next destination. In this festive chapter that is for some reason Christmas themed, you obtain the shotgun, which gets you pumped for what's in store. The introduction of the skateboard compared with some sick ramps that are oh so conveniently placed for your vehicle of leisure slash destruction, gives you the power of a faster speed. Towards the end, you flee an airship to then free fall like your Ethan Hunt from Mission Impossible 6, except with shooting and multiple bad guys falling after you because you apparently have a bounty on your head. Haha! <laughs> after plummeting for a very unrealistic amount of time, water conveniently breaks your fall and sends you into Pedro's world. This weird fever dream of a district is one that strays away from the normal, vibrant, comic book-esque, retro-punk color scheme and goes for a more drug-infused, soft-toned palette of color. Stressing the drug-infused tone of this district, everyone looks like David Cross from Mr. Show for unexplainable reasons, as well as the random giant floating heads of David Cross. Besides the David Cross heads, villains who are no longer living propel upward when dead, as if the lead in the bullets activated a form of helium within the opponents. Without helium, and instead the use of a propeller hat however, you now have the ability to soar by spinning, but only in Pedro's world. When you finally get out of the water, the sewer awaits you. In the sewer, you can find common occurrences like assault rifles, hidden knights who are equipped with swords, and your average geek playing Dig Dug and an arcade cabinet. <laughs> Mines are also incorporated in the district, and are basically a mix between a bomb and a laser. The propelled cable makes a cameo as well, making it easier than wall jumping, and lets you travel in style. Metal signs can be used to ricochet off bullets into enemies, similar to the frying pan, except the metal signs are usually hanging stationary. What isn't stationary are the parts of the stage itself, that either move by itself or are moved by a switch, and is the most puzzle-based district out of the five. Towards the end, you end up on a train, and after several confrontations with goons on your way there, you face off against a giant robot boss to the death. Commotion ceases once the robot explodes, leading you to the final destination, the internet. Compared to the rest of the guns, the rifle is, in my opinion, the best weapon to obtain due to its laser beam for easy targeting, the distance at which you can take down targets, and your ability to cause a one-shot kill if it's a headshot, making it my favorite weapon to use. The laser is also convenient to take out shields which the enemies may use by pressing a button which disables them, which is a totally great system for a shield. I think personally it would be way better for the guard if the button was in his pocket or something and not on a wall where you could shoot it. Great design, great job internet.
you're doing great. Another form of laser that is established by the internet are the ones you can slash can't shut off by shooting. Therefore, you must quickly dissect which kind of laser you're approaching to either avoid it or disable it appropriately. As you maneuver through the levels accordingly, the final boss is revealed at the very last step of the chapter, uncovering some things that were hinted at throughout the entire span of the gameplay. The entire journey in and of itself took me a day and a half to complete, and is one of the only games that has literally made me giddy due to its attention-grabbing gameplay. Old Town establishes the basics, District Null spices it up with a festive setting as well as incorporating different modes of transportation, Hedra's world breaks the norm in every aspect, The Sewer incorporates a different form of villain with the additions of some levels literally becoming a puzzle, and the internet which concludes this saga by enhancing the experience overall and uses all of the knowledge we've obtained from our journey to our advantage. Which made me realize that this game is mostly focused on the gameplay and has a storyline that I honestly wasn't paying attention to simply because I was so invested in the actual gameplay. While it may seem as if this is a bad impression that the storyline didn't invest me as much as the gameplay did, the gameplay delivers on why I was interested in the first place. It makes you feel like an action hero. And it's not necessary to reveal the specifics of the story for reasons of spoilers. And because this game is worth playing even if the storyline isn't as attention grabbing as the gameplay. If anything, the game could have worked without a storyline, but since the narrative was established and revealed little by little over time, the ending makes the name My Friend Pedro mean more when you finish the game, and gives the game a different perspective once completed. Completion with the development of My Friend Pedro took four years, and was originally inspired by a 2014 game made by the same studio titled the same thing. While it serves as an amazing reference made so many years ago, the 2019 release is one that was highly anticipated for, and one that, for the most part, was widely accepted as overwhelmingly positive. It sucks you in with its vibrant retro punk color scheme, immerses you with the flow of the movement, integrates different features occasionally to prevent monotony, enhances your audible experience with an atmospheric soundtrack, establishes five chapters that each provide a certain level of skill, knowledge, and technique to further push the narrative, as well as your excitement as you discover new abilities and that Dead Toast did not disappoint their dedicated fan base. Special thanks to my four patrons who support me on Patreon. If you'd also like to help support the channel, go to patreon.com slash or click the link in the description.